Continuous Integration and Continuous Deployment, or CICD. It's what programmers and developers use to streamline their workflow. They make their projects, their programs, their applications, their infrastructure, and their environment do more when code is ready. It's so that the build runtime and the pipeline can accomplish tasks or jobs and make things happen. But oftentimes these jobs and tasks and the build runtime and the pipeline need access to the production environment. They're gonna make production changes so there oftentimes might be secrets or credentials or sensitive information that could be included in that CICD pipeline. With that, security is super duper important, and when the CICD pipeline gets hacked, well, it could be a bad day. It is a whole new playground for ethical hackers, penetration testers, and red teamers, and if you're ever asking yourself, hey, how do I learn CICD security? How can I learn how to hack CICD? I want to show you this super cool resource right now. One of the reasons why it is so tough to learn CICD security is because you don't easily have an environment to be able to play with it, to be able to learn, to be able to use as a sandbox and hack on it and learn all these tricks. And that's why I wanted to bring to your attention CICD GOAT. It is a deliberately vulnerable CICD environment where you can learn CICD security through multiple challenges. It's like a CTF. It's like a capture the flag and it is exactly that, a deliberately vulnerable CICD environment. You can hack in the pipe line and capture the flag and hey all credit where credit is due this is something that is created by cider security but they have a whole lot of super cool stuff and i'd like to be able to showcase this in a couple of videos all this is built with Docker. That means it can run super duper easily on Linux and Mac and Windows, and it can be cross-platform just to spin this thing up. It allows engineers and security practitioners to learn and practice CICD security through a set of challenges. And this is community, I don't know, upheld, right? It's so that, hey, we can always keep adding new challenges, maybe we can keep playing and building out more of the game here, but the scenarios are a varying difficulty with each scenario focusing on one primary attack vector. These follow through and cover the top 10 CICD security risks to include, but certainly not limited to, insufficient flow control mechanisms, PPE or the poison pipeline execution, dependency chain abuse, blah, blah, blah. But check it out. Take a look at all the awesome stuff that you get with this in the Docker containers and the environment here. You have Git T, a minimal Git server to act as your source version control and all the management of the repositories and projects here. You have Jenkins, a Jenkins agent, to work as the CICD pipeline, something to run and go through your tasks or your jobs. You have local stack to emulate the cloud, to act like AWS or the Amazon web servers that you might be able to learn some stuff about. Prod, Docker and Docker and Lite HTTP services. CTFD, of course, to make this a game, make it a puzzle, make it a toy, make it fun. And GitLab, GitLab Runner and Docker in Docker. So check it out. This is the picture, little diagram of everything they've got rocking here. And I think that's awesome. One thing they stress and emphasize is that you don't need to clone the repository. In fact, they give you just the commands if you're willing to just, hey, curl pipe to bash or whatever. Well, I guess it's not strictly bash, right? They give you a Docker Compose file and then you can just fire it up. But they make a point here, hey, look, honestly, don't look through the repository because that might contain spoilers for some of the challenges. So we'll just go ahead and pull this thing down. There are a couple tips in getting your Git client set up to access the local private repositories. You can do that with just over HTTP. Flags are in a typical format and then you can solve every every challenge on its own. They all standalone challenges, they don't depend on one another, and if you want to learn, hey, you can use the hints that are present on CTFD. You don't need any like off-the-shelf CVEs. You don't need to do any hardcore full compromise of the Git to your Jenkins accounts either. We can spin all these up, explore the challenges, explore all the services, see what credentials we might need to access them all, and let's do it. But hey, if you do want to learn here, you don't want to be banging your head against the wall because it's entirely new, they do have these solutions present and available for you for all of the specific challenges that you might go through. Totally up to you whether or not you want to go through them, or we can just try to learn on the fly, but hey, we're going to have some fun with it. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and download and run here. I will copy and paste the command that we need, and I'll fire up a terminal for us to work in. Alrighty, so I am here in my Kali Linux terminal. I'm going to hit Control shift v to just paste in everything that I've copied here, and that will go ahead and download everything that it might need with the Docker images. You will, of course, need Docker as a dependency. You can probably sudo apt install docker.io if you want to use the repositories, or you can track down the regular installation online. Uh, but honestly, once you get Docker and Docker Compose, it'll start building it all and doing it all for you. You just got to sit and relax. 
All right, might be just about done here. I want to see this thing get to the finish line. All right, and now that all of the Docker images have been pulled down and downloaded, we can go ahead and get started, and Docker Compose has created all those running services and instances. We should be able to see those with Docker PS, and check it out. Hey, now we have a whole lot of CIDR security, CICD, GOAT services running and doing their thing. You can see local stack, git t, etc., etc. But let's get into our web browser. Let's get into Firefox, where we can go play the CTF. All right, now that Firefox is up and running for us, we can navigate to, in our address bar, I believe it is a localhost 8000. That's the port here, and here we go. Check it out. Here is the CTFD board for CICD GOAT, the deliberately vulnerable CICD environment. We can go ahead and click here to log in and get started hacking. We know that the credentials are Alice and Alice. Alice for the username, Alice for the password. Let's log in, and we can check out what the challenges are. Looks like we've got GOAT got wilder is a little category, and of course, hard challenges, moderate and easy. So hey, you know what? Let's have some fun and let's go ahead and try one of the very first challenges. Let's see if we can solve one of the easy challenges, White Rabbit. So I'm gonna go click on the White Rabbit challenge tile here. It says, I'm late, I'm late, no time to say hello, goodbye. Before you get caught, use your access to the Wonderland White Rabbit repository to steal the flag one secret stored in the Jenkins credential store. Ooh, okay, so before we dive into the hints, however, we can totally use those. Hey, it's all just here for learning. Let's go get another lay of the land and see where is everything else. We know that we need a local host, probably, I think, what is it, 8080? That was one for Jenkins, okay, and that uh, credential was Alice and Alice just as well, correct? Yep. Perfect, that logs in. Okay, and this is gonna act as our little CICD pipeline and runner here. We can see all the jobs or the builds that might have already came through in the past as this thing was just starting up, but ultimately we're gonna be visiting this while we end up pushing or pulling or doing anything with a repository that might trigger a new job to run within the pipeline. It's just a thing. It's just something that happens while code is being placed as part of the project. But now let's go see where our Git T project is. Is that, uh, 5,000? Is it 3,000? What port was it? Okay, yeah, it's git t here. We can go ahead and sign in. I do believe that is right up here where my face is in the way. Uh, username or address should be the Alice. The Alice, right? All right, so those are the credentials, the Alice and the Alice. Uh, and now the repositories that I have here are displayed on the left-hand side. Uh, a little bit tough to see. Let's see if we can just go check out our repositories in any other way. Now let's just go ahead and click on White Rabbit from Wonderland, and here it is. Here is the GitHub repository, or the Git T repository in this case, where we can see, hey, we have a Jenkins file, or one of the appropriate workflows that we might end up kind of being able to change or manipulate for a project, for code for anything that might exist in this repository. Looks like they have a readme that is just restructured text. Uh, looks like kind of copy paste of what the URL lib3 library would be for Python. We don't exactly need to worry about that, but we should take a look at what we might be able to do for things present in either the repository or just speed run right along to the Jenkins file. We know the Jenkins file is exactly what's going to be read and interpreted by Jenkins, our job runner. The thing that will work through any part of the pipeline, or well, we can say, hey, here's our environment that we define for any agents working through the pipeline in different stages that define or outline what is actually going to happen as part of this job or this task. Now check it out. You can see we will have a stage for installing requirements. You can see that it's going to end up using a couple steps here in that block to use shell commands. So denoting it with sh, and then uh, the three double quotes to denote a multi-line string, and it'll go ahead and run the commands, the virtual environment venv, pip3 install, yada, yada, yada. Same thing with running a linter stage. Same thing with running unit tests, and then at the end of the day, it always tries to clean ws. I believe that's the workstation. And that's it. Now, we would be able to go track this down if we want to actually go look inside of Jenkins. Remember, we could see, hey, here are all these specific tasks or builds in any repository and anything that's maybe been part of the pipeline. And there's one down here for Wonderland White Rabbit. Honestly, this is just me a little bit of exploring, hey, clicking around, seeing what's possible, seeing what we can see here for the Jenkins service. And that's honestly what I think a lot of this is when you're learning something new for the first time, because I'll admit, I don't know a whole lot about CICD pipeline, but I do like learning about this stuff. Hey, there's one actually going back to the status here. It does say, if you want to go check this out, there are no branches found that contain buildable projects right now. Jenkins will automatically build and 
and manage projects and branches that contain recognizable objects. These pipeline branch projects support building branches within a repository containing a pipeline script, and that, in this case, is the Jenkins file, as we just saw. Now, if you want to do a little bit of research on, huh, okay, let's think back to our kind of challenge prompt here. We want to go find a flag one secret, a flag that is stored within the Jenkins credential store. So let me go ahead and Google if we know we have access to stuff inside of this Jenkins file, and we might very well be able to add or edit this file. When we end up creating a new pull request or making changes to the repository, if the job runs, I wonder if we could kind of work with our own steps and run our own commands here to retrieve sensitive credentials. Let me go see how we might do that. I'll go ahead and Google for Jenkins, Jenkins file, I don't know, credential storage, kind of all the hotkeys and key terms that we already know here. Here's using credentials. Take a look at this link. Now, you could absolutely go read through this, and of course I recommend you to. This discusses how you end up handling credentials within Jenkins, and everything that you should really probably put in there, like secrets, like usernames and passwords, files, SSH, private keys, certificates, just important stuff that should not be leaked, right? We may be able to actually even, I don't know, go explore this and see if we can see it within Jenkins. Our Alice user probably doesn't have the permissions to be able to do that, but if you really wanted to rip stuff off, maybe do some hacking, you could probably go find how you might be able to do that with some of those Docker things. Scrolling around on this page, there isn't a lot more for us to read in or given any examples of syntax though, but they do note credentials stored in Jenkins can be used by specific pipeline projects, and you can read more about this in the handling credentials section of using a Jenkins file, which sounds like exactly what we want here. We should go dig into how we could use this. So they showcase this exact syntax that we saw a moment ago, the Jenkins file syntax, the semantics of this file here, and they actually go ahead and define these environment variables and they use whatever classic capital, all caps and uppercase letters, and the word and token here to say that will be set equal to a specific credential. Now, we could probably be able to access those environment variables present in our jobs or the steps of every single stage that we want to run. So maybe this is all we need. If we were to try to actually take our credentials storage here, reach out for flag one rather than the Jenkins AWS secret key, set that as an environment variable and then see if we can display it out on the screen. I wonder if we could track it down. Now, there's a super important thing to note here though, and I'll try and zoom in on this so you can read it because it is, uh, I think, a trend for a lot of the CI CD security stuff. To maintain the security and anonymity of credentials, if the job displays the value of credential variables from within a pipeline, like if you were to just echo a secret key out, Jenkins will only return the value of stars. It will reduce the risk of secret information being disclosed to the console and any logs by redacting it. It will obscure it, it will try to hide it, that way you don't accidentally expose it. So we'll have to kind of get around that. We have to bypass that in a nice little clever way. Now we could do that pretty easily, but let's go ahead and do this thing. Enough of me rambling, enough of me chatting and talking. Let's go ahead and grab this repository. I'll go ahead and clone with the copy URL button here. I'm gonna be using the HTTP schema, remember? And I will go ahead and git clone this right here. Paste that in. We know our username is the Alice. Password is the Alice. And there we go. Now we have that downloaded. We can go ahead and move into that white rabbit directory here. And let's go ahead and create a new branch because that is something that we know that the job will end up triggering on as part of a normal CI CD pipeline structure. Let me go ahead and get checkout tack B. Uh, I'll zoom in on this here. Like my new branch. Super duper cool, switch to that. Now let's go ahead and modify our Jenkins file. All right, I've opened this up in Sublime Text, my text editor of choice, and now you can work with any of the syntax and structure that we've seen already here. Honestly, we don't need all of this stuff, all these other stages or steps to run. If we're just kind of trying to take advantage of this, if we're just trying to hack into it right, we could try to just change a stage to be like, display flag and show it on the screen or whatever name that we really want. But the steps that we want to end up using, well, we want to change these commands that we run to try and echo the flag. But we need to go ahead and set that flag to be a variable or an environment variable that we could go ahead and access. Let's say flag can equal, just as we saw and we wrote online, credentials of, what was it, flag one, given uh, what CTFD said? Yeah. 
Use the access that you have to steal the Flag One secret stored in the Jenkins Credential Store. So we're looking good. If I go ahead and save this, we do want to go ahead and echo this flag out. But remember, if that's just displayed on the screen, it might end up being redacted or obscured. So we kind of have to hide it or masquerade it in some way. So what I'm going to end up doing is piping this with the vertical pipe symbol to base 64. That way it'll just spit out on the screen and hey, we're trusting and letting and forcing, I don't know, whatever we might be able to let our pipeline do given our modified and poisoned pipeline execution process here. This is, at its core, I think the, the most baby trivial example of PPE. Now, let's get back to the terminal. Let's see if I could go ahead and git add my Jenkins file. Let's git commit. I'll say the new message is trying to solve challenge one and get push. See if that works. Oh, we need to go ahead and set our branch. That's all right. We can just kind of copy and paste what Git is already letting us do here. Hello. Thank you. Username should be the Alice. Again, password is the Alice. Will this work? There we go. I can see it is pushed. All right, now the very last step here, now that we've pushed to our branch in the repository, is we want to create a pull request. We want to see, hey, is this code okay to move into main, into the regular, like the top tier branch that defines the structure of this project and application? So we will create a pull request, and then we'll see Jenkins, or our CICD runner, kickstart a new job or task and move through these stages and steps, and hopefully, with our poisoned pipeline execution, we can see our code run, and maybe we'll be able to execute exfiltrate that secret token, the flag or some access credentials or anything really. But before we dive into that, I do want to give a little bit of time to chat about our sponsor, Sneak, because they do some incredible stuff with CICD pipelines and they're even able to use that to keep your code secure. Your projects, everything that you're up to, hey, why not use CICD to make your life easier for secure software development? Let's hear it from Sneak. I'll be honest, I write bad code. Even though I try to hunt for vulnerabilities in lots of other software, I still have vulnerabilities even in my own projects. Everyone does. And that's why I use Sneak to scan for vulnerabilities in code, dependencies, containers, and configuration files. And Sneak helps find and fix those vulnerabilities in real time. You can try it and see for yourself. You can sign up for free with my link below. Import your repositories and sit back and let Sneak do the work for you it'll find the flaws and vulnerabilities in your own applications. Check out this prototype pollution vulnerability that Sneak uncovered. We can see more details about the code path that introduced this vulnerability, and even learn more about this kind of vulnerability or any others if you check out the Sneak Learn Lesson. I've referenced the Sneak Learn Lessons and their vulnerability database a ton, especially in assessments and penetration testing, and even during Capture the Flag competitions. From there, you can see an explanation of the flaw, proof of concept exploit code and attack demonstrations, and most importantly, how to mitigate this vulnerability. But the best part? Sneak helps you fix this vulnerability with a single click. It'll automatically open a pull request so you can just merge and move on. So seriously, check out Sneak. It's crazy how many vulnerabilities could be affecting your projects and you don't even realize. Take advantage of their resources and learning material and learn all about the different vulnerabilities out there. It's completely free and you can sign up right now with my link in the video description. Huge thanks to Sneak for sponsoring this video. All right, back in action here. Let's go ahead and go visit Git T one more time. I'm going to refresh the page and we should now see there are two branches. If I go ahead and click on the drop down here, there's my new branch and honestly, Hey, this is separate from main, correct? We had a new commit just about a couple of minutes ago. So what if I try to create a pull request? Here's that new pull request button. And then I'll go ahead and say, yeah, you know what? The changes that I made, I'm totally cool with it. Let's create a new pull request with our default message here. Not going to worry about changing the description. Let's just hit create pull request and let's see what comes through. Let's say, oh, okay. Uh, this pull request does not have enough approvals yet. Zero of two approvals granted. Um, does it still need to like actually do that or will it just kind of go? Did it automatically try to run a job? Let's go check out Jenkins here. This is the documentation. This is the CTFD board. Here I am back on Jenkins. Let me go to the dashboard one more time. Uh, I'll hit control shift R and hey, okay. Wonderland winter rabbit, whatever. It has one pull request. Here it is. Check it out. 
So that PR, uh, and I'm assuming we can just let this thing go, right? Hey, yeah, just build is scheduled. Okay, when is the build going to hit? Let me check out the build history here. Oh, it's cruising. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so something presumably already started 17 seconds ago. I don't know if I just double clicked it way too many times. Yeah, let's go check out one of these logs here. And this is the console output that we'll be able to see. Now, hey, here is some of the information that we can gather here and all of the output present from our Jenkins file. Now note, it's going to be checking out the credentials that we might have already asked for, maybe some access that's other things that we had in present here. Let's see if we can move into the stages. Check it out. There is our trying to solve challenge one commit message and masking supportive pattern matches a flag, right? Because the with credentials aspect that we're using here is going to end up displaying the flag. And they even give us a warning. A secret was passed to SH using Groovy string interpolation, which is insecure. Uh, that's a bit interesting. But hey, there is our echo of the flag value piped into base64 so that ultimately we have this base64 string. Now, this is what we want here. That is going to be the value of our flag one environment variable. So let's get back to our terminal. Let's go ahead and pipe that to echo. I'll use the base64 tag D argument to decode it. And there it is. There is our flag 10615D, yada, yada, yada. Now we can go ahead and right click this, copy and paste it, bring it over to the CTFD board. And man, I'm pretty excited about that. I'm for one really happy because look, <laughs> I don't know a whole lot of CICD stuff. It's a new world to me. And when I thought, oh, I could solve this, that'll be kind of fun to learn. Even if it's just some simple Googling, going ahead and research on, you know, what syntax does the Jenkins file take? And then trying to see, well, what is Jenkins file going to really mean or look like compared to something like GitHub Actions, compared to something like a GitLab Runner, compared to CircleCI or plenty of other CI CD platforms. Those are all things that I'm super duper interested in and want to learn more about. And, you know, I was just hanging with some of the other incredible folks over at Hacktricks while I was at RootedCon in Madrid, Spain. And that's Carlos Polop and Ignacio Dominguez and some of the other great folks that help contribute and write the cloud hack tricks book and that stuff gets into oh yeah aws gcp azure cloud stuff but also it gets into ci cd pipelines these job tasks these runners these things that can make your life easier but could also make for some really crazy supply chain attacks and big vulnerabilities being introduced right into production. There's so much you could do with it. And with that, uh, I think it's important to learn about. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you're enjoying what CICD GOAT is. And maybe I hope we can get a few more videos out just like this. But hey, if you haven't, please be sure to give Sneak a try. They make it super duper easy to work with CICD. And that way you can actually use some of the right code applications to make stuff secure and keep it easy for you. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.